Uh, my worst wipeout. Uh, that's no fun. There was supposed to be a huge toe swell, which is pretty much one of the biggest swells that you can anticipate. I'm swimming in a pretty critical spot because you have to be in the barrel with the rider. Right? When you're in the water, you can't see it coming. So I turned around and somehow that sinking feeling was just the worst thing ever because it was a, you know, a 10 to 12 foot wave, top to bottom, and it was coming at me. I just dove straight to the bottom, kicked as hard as I could, and I was super lucky. I was like, oh my God, I've actually made it underneath this thing. And I'm swimming and I'm swimming. I'm like, God, there shouldn't be this much water. Like, what's, what's happening here, you know? And suddenly I'm swimming and I got that sinking feeling like literally arm's length from the surface. I was like, oh no. It just grabbed me by the feet pretty much and sucked me straight down to the reef. So I smash the reef, okay, I push off. And at this point I am out of air. I'm, okay, this is a very bad situation. I could drown here. So I start really panicking and I'm like, okay, stay calm, Dom, stay calm. And in the back of your head, it's like, I need air now. So I'm stroking and again, I'm like, there shouldn't be this much water on top of me. This is Chobo. Like, what is, what in the fuck is going on here? And I stuck one arm out of the water and I was like, oh no. Because at that point I knew that I was, I'd swam into the lip of the second wave. So only my arm came out and I got lucky enough to stick my head out, take a breath, and then I was going over with the lip of the second one, which is the worst thing you can do. So I took one breath, got the beating just as violent, if not worse, all over again. Came up and there's so much white cloud that you're trying to breathe, but you're sucking in foam at the same time. And then the next one hits you. And the next one, and the worst part about that is that Chopo, the way the mechanics works, is gonna push you further and further away from the channel into another wave called the right. And that's every bit of the angriest wave you've ever seen because it's like Chopo, top to bottom, and it breaks on dry reef. So the water's drawing up behind me. I'm standing on the reef and I'm watching this monster come at me. And I was like, oh no, if this thing lands on me, I'm dead. I think what first really got deep seated in me the love of the ocean was obviously seeing these things from Jacques Cousteau and, and the kind of the, the mystique that it carries, you know, it's, it's the creatures within it that are kind of ominous looking. It's the quiet that you get when you're out there, especially on your own, or it just has this appeal to me that is something that has always kind of been a calm for me that offers me a, a, an odd calm in that chaos, especially when it comes to waves. Yeah, the waves are dynamic and they're breaking and they're loud, but it, it, I don't know, it allows me to be in the moment and quiet within my own head. Because if not, my wheels are spinning and I'm, I'm one of these people. It's like, if, I'm all the, if I have a second of myself, you'll see me pacing around the room, like I'm annoying in that way. So it's, it gives me a moment of, of just hyper presence, of just here, here, this is where I am and this is, and nothing else matters. And I know that sounds like a bit of a cliche, but I've loved that ever since I was really little. I used to go out and sit on the beach by myself, just to listen to the quiet. And same thing sailing. There's nothing more that I love than being on the boat, on watch by myself. In the middle of the ocean, you hear nothing. And just the abyss below you, the expansive views, I don't know. All of that really, you know. And I've always, yeah, the creatures in the ocean have always, always fascinated me. A beautiful image to me, um, ideally is something that doesn't, that has longevity. You know, that doesn't lose that, that I want to keep looking at this kind of over time. Because there's a lot of images that, yeah, that it's, it, it, with the, the awe factors of that thing is incredible. How and where was this taken? I think a beautiful image needs those things. But I think it needs to speak more also on a different level why you want to keep looking at it. And it speaks to the person viewing it, right? So it, it creates a questioning process within them and something that it creates an emotion ideally that, that moves them and you know, that to me is a beautiful image makes people stop and be like, what and where is that? And, and, and evokes some sort of emotion. Teahupo, the village at the end of the road. Um, 
It's amazing because somehow it's managed to stay in and of itself a little village. You get to the end of the road, it's called that for a reason because the main road stops right there. You have to walk over a bridge and that's where all the local families are still living. The many generations of families are still there, still have a stronghold on that whole point. As soon as you get out of the car, even at the car park, and you start walking over that bridge and into looking back at those mountains, you can't help but feel the presence of something. Uh, I'd like to say otherworldly, but it's very worldly. It's almost like that you can feel the world around you, right? And especially that place. And especially when you're out in the wave and the wave's breaking and you're looking back at the immense expanse of these, it almost looks like Land of the Lost, you know? And it's, you can definitely feel that mana of something very special and intense is happening here on a constant basis. What keeps drawing me back to Chopo is just the savage beauty of it, really. Because as I was, you know, it, it is that ultimate teacher, right? Because it's, it, it will teach you the best and the worst lessons. And the thing about it is that I'm so passionate about wanting to be there for every swell. I haven't missed one, really, any significant swell in the last 10 years. It's one of these things that gets in your head and, you, you know, it's like, it's like anything else, I suppose, that you get obsessed with something and then, you know, dog with a really, really alluring bone. <laughs> Chopo is probably the scariest wave in the world just because it breaks on such shallow, sharp reef and it's such a heavy, pound for pound, I don't think there's a heavier wave. The, the reason that I love doing this particular type of photography, especially at this wave, and I only travel to certain locations on the planet where there are kind of waves of consequence, as they're called, because, yeah, it gives me that calm and that hyper-focus because you need to be aware of so many things at once, right? Where you gotta learn how to position yourself within this huge vortex of a wave that will and can kill you. Because it comes out of deep water, it's not like a regular wave that peaks and then folds over and breaks. It's just the whole ocean folding in on itself. And those big waves are just the hollowest, angriest wave you've seen ever. And it's breaking on shallow reef. The sound of it hitting the reef, it, it sounds like you're cracking. The loudest, scariest whip. So it brings all these elements together where you just have to be so hyper aware that you're no longer thinking of anything else. And it's a, it's an odd intelligence of its own, you know, because your brain starts clicking into these things that like it becomes like muscle memory to a certain extent of, okay, I know exactly what that wave's doing and the lip did this weird little thing, I know exactly what that's going to do. And then because you're in the wave and in the water, you can read the wave face a little bit like braille. And you put it all together and you know where to sit and how to sit and the rider will be doing this so i need to be in this position not to be in his way but to get the best angle and the best image and so it's a lot of these little things that you just start clicking you don't even have to think about them anymore but there's so much happening that your brain just kind of focuses in you know yeah i swim no matter what uh, big small tiny whatever it is but on the huge days i'm swimming anyway on the huge toe days uh, i'm still swimming the thing that draws me the most to that is that I'm actually participating in creating an image, right? Because it's both the rider is doing something unique within the wave, because every wave is unique. Um, the way that he rides it, I'm trying to put that and put it in the, in the forefront of how good he is as a rider. At the same time, trying to display how dynamic the place that I'm sitting in is to create that image. So it takes the way of the rider and myself to put it all together to create these things. So it's stressful, but it's also what draws me to doing this, right? Because it's the adrenaline, the excitement of seeing these guys pretty much battling these huge, mutant, angry things. We call them the, the, the black ones, right? Because the whole, the whole wave goes black, pretty much. It's just like that. So and just the whole environment of everyone screaming once the guy gets spat out of the barrel and all the boats there and you're swimming around trying to survive and trying to frame it and get the right angle that you want, all these things happening at the same time makes it for super exciting and amazing. There's no better feeling in the world for me these days, um, work-wise, when the wave and everything comes together, right? It's just a, a beautiful 
scary looking way with the rider in it usually standing tall almost looking too calm you know and then all these things come together you feel like i was in the right position like i'm adding to the image and you look down and you look at it in your camera and you're like that's the one <laughs> that's the one i was waiting for and then after that it's just yeah, and I don't know.